All right, good afternoon. I hope you can hear over the air conditioner. I have a feeling it goes off a lot while I'm shooting these videos. Um, the only reason I have the number two up here in the top left is so that when I upload it to YouTube, I can make sure that I mark this as the second factoring practice, not the first, because now we have a few more tips and ways to factor in our arsenal than we did with that first practice. Um, these might look a little bit more difficult. I'm trying to increase our level of difficulty in this practice um, so that you challenge yourself. Oh, I do see I have an error right here. So I meant to do that. Maybe that gave the whole thing away. So go ahead and pause the video. Try as much as you can um, or try one at a time. Up to you. And so let's get started. Okay. So this is exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about number recognition. When I see 27, my brain immediately thinks three times three times three. And so I have that recognition that 27 is a perfect cube. And then I kind of just look at the 125 and I say, oh yeah, that's five times five times five. And so I know at first glance that I am gonna use those cube formulas for how to factor the difference of two perfect cubes. So let me write down the formula. Maybe you've already tried this one and you have it written down. When this is a negative, the formula looks like this. And so if you recall from the lesson, our job is to figure out what it is that's being cubed. What is the A and what is the B? And so if you cube root this first term, you would have that the A is 3x. And if you cube root the back term, it is 5. So that is our A and our B. You have a cube root button on your calculator if you need help with that. Um, and you just want to check and see if 27 and 125 our cube roots, you do have that button in most scientific calculators and most cell phones. All right, so let's just plug it in. 3x minus 5. For this piece, I do need to square that, so it's going to be 9x squared. Then I'm going to multiply these two. So when I multiply here, let's go ahead and multiply. We wouldn't write it 3x5 like this suggests, we would simplify that as much as possible. So 3 times 5 is 15 and x in the back. And then when I square 5, I'm going to write 25. Number 2. Um, I see that this is x to the 4th. It doesn't happen that often that that would be a higher power, but it happens occasionally. Remember, we touched on this one other time where I said, you're just gonna divide that by two. So this is gonna be x squared and x squared because when I go back to foil it, I would come up with that x to the fourth. So you always just divide that by two. And so what I'm really looking for here, there's no GCF, my leading coefficient is one. And so what I'm really looking for here is two numbers that multiply to 64 that add up to negative 20. So because it multiplies to a positive, I know I'm going to have two negative factors, a negative times a negative. Um, if you're thinking to yourself, this is a perfect square and that's a perfect square. And so it's going to fall into that eight times eight pattern. This is one that doesn't because, first of all, there's no way to um, come up with 20. Well, this is the whole point, not first of all. There's no way to come up with 20 from 8, to, or eight plus 8. So let's list our factors here and look for things that add to 20. And hopefully you see it's right here. And so negative 4 and negative 16. And so we are done with that step. However, this one has a great trick to it because now I, I chose this one very specifically. What is true here? Perfect square, 
perfect square and a negative sign. So this can factor more. This is the difference of two perfect squares. Same with this back one. Perfect square, perfect square, and a negative sign. So when I factor this one more step, I get x plus two, x minus two. And when I factor this one more step, I get x plus four, x minus four. And so that is the final answer to the question. All right, number three. Oh, number three looks so intimidating. So you have a couple different choices. Um, remember we talked about if there were two variables, I might just suggest that you ignore the back ones, but don't forget to put them in at the end. Or if you can see that pattern, that this is a perfect square, and this is a perfect square. You can try that shortcut. So I'm gonna kind of look at this one two different ways. The first way is to ignore this. And then I'm gonna just slip and slide it. So I'm gonna write m squared minus 24 m 16 times nine is I don't know what 16 times nine is on video. I should know, or I think it's 144. Yes, 144. All right, and then I can factor this. So 144 has a lot of factors, but I see that 12 and 12, because I know that 144 is a perfect square, and 12 and 12 make 24, so m minus 12, m minus 12. And if I multiply the 16 in that first step, I have to reverse it. And then I'm gonna reduce. So 12 over 16 reduces down. Let me switch colors. 12 over 16, I can take a four out. So it's gonna reduce down to three fourths. And obviously this one will also reduce down to three-fourths. And so that four will slide in front of the M. And since it is the same factor twice, there we go. So that's option one. Oh, and then you gotta remember to put the ends back. Look at me almost forgetting. So if you forgot that, you're not the only one. So if you do erase these ends here, you've got to remember to put them back so that your original problem matches. The other option to solve this is recognizing those perfect squares and then seeing if it fits the pattern. So the square root of 16m squared is 4m. And the square root of 9n squared is 3n. And it's negative because that is negative. And then you're checking if your middle term matches up. So that gives you negative 12 and that gives you negative 12. So it does fit that pattern. And so that is the same answer. So I don't know which way is easier for you personally. Do what feels right. Maybe you'll use one method one time and another the other time. It's unknown. Okay, number four is definitely a slip and slide because I think that the more we practice this, the easier it will be. So we're gonna multiply that to the back. So we're gonna get x squared plus 11x, 35 times six is 210. Sorry, needs to be a negative 210. Because that negative right there. And now I'm gonna list the factors of 210. So we have one and 210. I didn't work these out in advance so you can kind of hear my thought process. Um, hopefully it's a little bit more genuine that way. So one and 210, 210 is even. So it's two times 105. 5 goes into 210 uh, 42 times. 6 goes into 210 35 times. Um, 7 goes into 210 
then it goes into 210 um, 30 times um, 10 and 21. I'm starting to get stumped here. 30 and 7. Uh, let's see, 70 and 3. I am missing the most obvious one. I feel like 14. I kind of lost all order here. 14 will go into it. Uh, 14 times 15. Oh, I usually forget this one. Obviously, if it ends in a, here, I had it the whole time. All right, so again, with my thought process, sometimes even I don't see it right away. So this is one way, the only way to make 11. If this was a positive and that was a negative, and so then we're going to factor this up. And if this is a 6 and I multiply by that 6, I'm going to divide by that 6 here. 6 over 10, or 10 over 6 is 5 thirds. So that 3 slides right there. 21 over 6, we can take a 3 out, so that's 7 halves. And if we re-multiply, if we multiplied, if we foiled, for some reason with this chapter with you guys, I keep saying refoil, which makes no sense. If I foil that, I will end up with what I start with. All right. Number five has a GCF. Hopefully you caught that. Hopefully you might have seen it in the beginning because I wrote it down incorrectly. So I'm going to pull that three out front. I'm going to recognize my perfect squares. Ten, uh, 100 is 10 times 10, and that's a negative. So that really quick, x plus 10, and x minus 10, and that wraps it up. Remember, if it was like this, just total side note, I'm going to erase this in a second. Um, if you have a problem like this, this does not factor. So if it's positive, it doesn't work. So just a quick little reminder there. All right, and I'm going to erase all those factors that I embarrassingly went on and on about. Let's see how I do on this one. All right, no GCF between 8, 17, and 21. So 8 times 21 is 168. And so now I need factors of 168. I know I'm going to have one positive and one negative. Ooh, I don't know. Let me double check that you can see my thought process here. Um, it's right where that glare is. Sorry about that. Let's put the factors of 168 over on this side. So how am I going to come up with an odd? Let's see. Um, let's do 2 and 84. Um, let's do 4 and 42. Oh, and then there's 21 and 8. Um, let's do 7 because if if, if, it's, if 21 is a factor and 7 goes into 21, 7 is definitely going to go into 168. And so 7 goes into 168, 20, uh, 7, maybe it doesn't. 7 goes into 168, 24 times. That took me a long time. Um, let's see, what else do I have? I have this right here. That will work perfect. If this is a positive and that's a negative, that'll come up with my 17. And so plus 24 and minus 7. So remember, if I multiply by the 8 here, I'm going to divide by the 8 here. And so 24 divided by 8 is 3, and there's nothing to slide in front of the G. 
here this cannot be reduced, so the eight slides in front. And that completes that. So once again, I hope these extra problems are helpful and uh, you guys take care and reach out to me as I can help you. Thanks.